Hi, take one. Let's see how this goes. I want you to take a look at my shirt. You may recognize me from real life. I'm your online teacher now. I thought that was pretty funny. Ms. Keir bought it for me. Um, it was kind. A couple of things I want to point out. Um, I went to school today and uh, golly, you know, it's really not much without all of you there. So anyway, I went to school and I brought home my new owl, which one of you made for me and I heart it. I hope you don't mind if I say so, but Kim, you made that and I've missed her since um, I got here. Uh, I brought SpongeBob home. Six period loves to hide SpongeBob and I just felt like I should bring him home. And um, I'm gonna try to not reintroduce the owl to Buddy. That's why the owl's eye is all screwed up. And then do you have an idea what else I brought home? Elmo, which is really not appropriate for our Holocaust conversation, but um, I think I'm gonna get a spot right over here and you know manage him there, but he is with us. Um, my son could not understand why I brought all these toys home today. Uh, but you know, um, so the other thing I brought home were my plants. If you were worried about our plants quick, thought this was great. You know, the viney plant, um, I was trying to pull it up, you know, to take it away. Uh, and it stopped, it was stuck to the screen. And do you know why it was stuck to the screen? I've never seen anything like this before. It had actually, uh, grown into the screen, those tiny little holes in our classroom that freaked me out. Okay, so um, I had a little bit of an office hours with about 12 students at different times today. Uh, I'm feeling much better. I'm feeling <clears throat> more connected. And I've shared with the team that the, um, my, you know, eighth grade team, that what I'm hearing from you is that more of those opportunities are pleasant. Um, so we will continue to look for ways to do that. I know that all homerooms at Lyle Junior High because of Ms. Burns' recommendation, and you know how I love to like do shout outs um, and show appreciation for the people that uh, make a difference to us. She felt like it would be really helpful for you to have um, some one-on-one -on -one time sort of, you know, as a small, our homerooms together. So um, be looking for information from that. It should be a meet um, uh, through Google Classroom is my guess. Um, so, Reach out to your homeroom teacher um, if you are unfamiliar with that idea, uh, but maybe give them until tomorrow because they'll probably put something out. And it's in the afternoon. I can't remember the time off the top of my head. I'm sorry. Um, we're trying to make it afternoon just in case some of my kids are sleeping till 5 a.m. This is not good for your brain, but you know, it's a weird time. Um, okay, none of my business. Uh, anyway, so um, I am looking at day 11. And what I would like is to um, talk to you a little bit about what this experience is like. So you're gonna add, answer a few questions. What is your reaction to the role, the US role in the St. Louis? Um, uh, what was happening in the ghettos? Why were they created? What was that like? And then the Einstadt's group in this mobile killing squads, um, what's your reaction to what I have to share with you about that? So you should watch the whole video because otherwise you're gonna be missing big chunks and I, probably, I promise not to talk too long, really. Um, okay, so let's talk about, uh, we're in 1939 now, okay? The war has not yet broken out. Um, Hitler has not gone into Poland, which starts the war. Uh, but his measures, his um, restriction of rights, as we saw yesterday, are in full swing in Germany. And one of the things that he was encouraging was people to leave, um, and so who were Jewish. And so... Um, what we see here is a uh, large number of uh, Jews trying to flee, so they would be refugees, um, 900 of them uh, aboard the St. Louis, this ship that was um, destined for Cuba and then, um, and then the United States. Uh, it left Germany on uh, Nathan's birthday, May 13th, 1939, he wasn't born then, uh, and they were refused entry. They were refused entry in Cuba. They were refused entry in the United States. Um, we would not accept them. So um, 
they were they did find safe um, harbor in uh, in Europe in Western Europe, um, but uh, they you know right here you can see that they were they were able to dock in Belgium, but then the governments of Belgium, the Netherlands, France, and the UK accepted these refugees. Uh, France, Belgium, and the Netherlands will be occupied territory by the Nazis uh, in the next year or so. So um, those people most likely ended up in um, as part of the Holocaust, as part of the genocide. And we did not take them. Um, so, you know, think about that. I guess one of the things that I want you to think critically about is that the United States also experienced anti-Semitism. Um, and then maybe link that with, uh, you know, people who are fleeing Central America right now have been, have tried to come here for safe harbor and have not been allowed to enter uh, much of the time as well. Okay, so that this, you know, history doesn't really go away. Okay, so this is St. Louis. Um, the other thing that I wanted to point out to you is that the German invasion of Poland, so brutal, uh, surprising. Uh, look at these, the rubble in these streets. Uh, the Germans were determined not to have any stalemate like they had had in World War I, no trench warfare. It was lightning war, it was blitzkrieg. You are familiar with that already. Um, and there is a huge amount of, uh, the places that Hitler had collected, like um, parts of uh, Czechoslovakia, uh, Austria, the, um, the Rhineland, those were all places that were, had a majority of Germans there. Uh, this is the first time that he's gone outside of their legal boundaries to violently take over and uh, take over of people, you know how we have our hierarchies that we kind of look at throughout history. The Slavic people were very low on his list of you know worthy people. In fact, he had um, in his book, Mein Kampf, um, he said in there that he wanted to go east, take over, create Lebensraum, which is living space for Germans because he felt like they were so much superior to everybody. Uh, you know, the Japanese also thought they were superior to everybody. It's, you know, there's some things to pay attention to there with Pride and Prejudice, please. Um, so uh, he removed these people from their homes and uh, made space for Germans to occupy uh, those places. Okay, um, so the war begins. Uh, and he, again, there's, our, there's also very large populations of Jews in Eastern Europe um, because, uh, I don't have my map with me, but um, Israel had experienced a diaspora in which the, the Jews who were original to um, Israel were forced out. And some went to Eastern Europe and some went to North Africa. So there are large collections of people who are um, in Eastern Europe, particularly in Poland, particularly in Russia, um, and who have experienced uh, unwelcoming behavior for sure in those areas. And so now um, Hitler is going in with his forces. So let's just talk about this. The next piece is the Einstadtsgruppen. So, um, we did a little work. We have some readings in my classroom um, that we've done in the past. And essentially, the Nazis are going into this territory and taking over. This other group, these Einstandsgruppen, are people, Einstandsgruppen, who are people who have the same racial ideology, okay, uh, as Hitler in terms of his anti Semitism. And um, they have been chosen to go into these areas to identify people and then to kill people. So it starts out very rudimentary. It starts out very um, sort of not thought out very well, which becomes like, you know, sort of a, a brand of the Nazis to think things through, to have a systematic plan. So originally though, um, the Einsatzgruppen went into um, the East and started collecting people. And um, there's a really large collection of people here. I think it's this one. Um, and 
uh, they, they bring them to a large open grave and start shooting them. And they, you know, are falling in this grave. Uh, and Bobby Yar is one of them. Um, and this happens to uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of people. And what they realize is that the Einsatz group and these soldiers, even though they really have this anti-Semitism and they're really, you know, racist people who really think that these people ought to die, they are having trouble shooting children, shooting unarmed women and men, um, standing there before them, you know, peacefully. Uh, they are having trouble. And so all of this goes back to, you know, Berlin and um, to the headquarters to figure out what to do about it. So the next thing that they decide to do is um, create these killing vans. And so they would, the driver would, you know, and his crew would put people into the back of these sealed vans and drive them. And they had it, the distance, the speed, um, the amount of um, exhaust, uh, coming from the van and piped back into the back of this sealed container where the people were. And um, what they found is that uh, they found that the drivers still had a hard time. So the drivers would drink whiskey. Um, the drivers would drive faster. And um, they had like, they even have, they even have um, like, notes about how the axle, the back axle would break on these vans because the weight shifted and they would put it in terms like that. They wouldn't say that the people were inclined to get out. They would say that the weight shifted and the axle would break and that this was a problem. Well, what would happen is that the people were sometimes still alive when they would take them out and, um, and then they would end up having to shoot them anyway. Uh, so they actually refer to this in headquarters as the psychological problem. And um, since this is not effective for the millions of people that they are planning on killing, there were 9 million Jews that lived in Europe originally, and 6 million of them will die. Uh, so they will come up with a more systematic plan uh, to do that. I think I skipped ahead. Let's talk. Uh, so that's the Einsatzgruppen. Einstein's group um, and I just was, I was just really struck by what, reading these, these notes, you know, typed in detail about the psychological problem, the guys not being able to fulfill these duties. Um, and so they'll, they'll meet, you'll, we'll talk about this next time, that they'll meet at this Wansi conference and um, make plans. But the ghettos are part of that uh, in terms of um, there's a great scene at the beginning of Schindler's List. I'm not recommending Schindler's List, okay? But there's this really interesting scene where at the beginning, um, it's in Poland. It's in an area that the Nazis have taken over, and they're going through the apartments, the houses and such, and they're taking the Jews out of their homes. And they're, you know, lining them up on the streets by gunpoint and pushing them out of their homes. They get like five minutes to pick all of their goods, you know, that they want to bring with them. Very powerful scene. And um, Mr. Blatchett is heading home. Uh, so they, um, they're put into these apartment buildings, these ghettos, and there's no room for all of these people. They're crammed in there. There's no fresh water. There's no fresh food. Uh, it's it's um, chained off, you know, it's, it's guarded. It's uh, like a prison camp. Uh, they're encouraging you know, uh, disease, because that's a natural way then to, to kill these people off, but they're sort of sectioning them off to begin with. And then um, these ghettos often be next to train lines, railroad lines, um, and we'll find out, you know, what happens with that tomorrow. But the point of these ghettos was to pull any Jews who were living um, in the regular part of town and pull them into this area so that they could, they could take over their homes essentially all of their goods, all of their, the bed was warm. Okay. By the time they would uh, come out of there. Okay. So just to be clear, I'm going to give you a couple of links that I think would be helpful to just kind of clue into a little bit more, but you should be able to answer these questions. And then I'm trying to create giving opportunity for a little enrichment, which is separate and not necessary, but I promised some kids today that I would find this clip of Elie Wiesel, 
beautiful. And you don't have to answer any questions, but take a look at it. Maybe write me a little something. Tell me that you watched it and liked it or just thought it was interesting. There are some points where it goes, whoosh, whoosh, but keep going. It's, it's fine. I'm going to stop now. Um, I hope you're, hope you're doing well. Um, and we'll talk soon.